Hey, Frank Kane here in the Sundog Education Course Recording Studio. Welcome. So let's talk about what's new in Apache Spark 3. A lot of people are coming to this course trying to see, well, what's the big deal about Spark 3? How do I learn about what's new in it? And well, let's give you a quick rundown. Uh, the truth is not a whole lot. You know, a, a lot of the changes in Spark 3 are more about deprecating old stuff than bringing in new stuff. But there is some new stuff to talk about as well. So let's go through it. In the deprecation department, a big deal is that they are starting to deprecate the old MLlib library, the uh, machine learning library, the one that's based on the RDD interface. So they're still keeping the one that is based on data frames around, but the original version of Spark MLlib with RDDs is in this weird state where they're not like really officially shutting it down, but they're just going to stop maintaining it. And if they if it breaks, they don't care anymore. And there's already some instances of that happening. Uh, so if you are going to be using machine learning within Apache Spark, you want to make sure you're using the new data frame based uh, ML library instead. And we've updated this course to reflect that already. The main difference in Spark 3, the main benefit of it is that it's a heck of a lot faster. And in some benchmarks, it's even 17 times faster than Spark 2. They've used some tricks like adaptive execution and dynamic partition pruning to improve the performance of Apache Spark even further. So that's really the main thing that Spark 3 is bringing to the table, better performance. And a lot of that just happens under the hood uh, without you having to think about it. Okay. Other thing they've done is deprecate Python 2. No big surprise there. Uh, Python 3 is the way of the future. And if you want to be using Python with Spark, you're going to have to use Python 3 going forward. Fine. Whatever. So... What else is going on with Spark 3? What about deep learning? Like one of the big rumors about Spark 3 uh, before it came out was that it might have some big new deep learning system built into it. Wouldn't that be cool? Just be able to do deep learning across a Spark cluster automatically? That'd be handy. Well, they kind of did that and they kind of didn't. There's no like real deep learning feature per se in Spark 3, but what they've done is allow Spark to take advantage of GPU instances. So if you're running on a cluster that has GPU nodes on it, it can take advantage of that and still run on it. So that way you can use add-on projects such as MML Spark or TensorFlow on Spark uh, on top of Spark to integrate Spark with deep learning frameworks like TensorFlow. And Spark is now capable of taking advantage of GPU hardware on a cluster to accelerate that. So Spark itself isn't doing deep learning, but it's exposing the hardware that is GPUs that is more friendly to deep learning to add-ons into Spark. So that's kind of the approach they've taken for now. Another thing is a better Kubernetes integration. Uh, they now support things like dynamic scaling and again, support of GPU instances so you can do deep learning stuff on top of Spark. They've also added support for binary files in Spark 3. So now you can say something like spark.read.format binary file. And what that will do is load up an entire file worth of raw binary data into a single row of a data frame. So you know, that could come in handy if you're dealing with binary data, obviously, like uh, image files and things like that. Maybe it's useful to load up each individual binary file into a row of a data frame, uh, distribute that to a Spark cluster, and then, you know, write your own code to process that binary data however you want. Kind of a, you know, easy way to process and distribute the processing of binary data in Spark 3. Another thing is uh, GraphX seems like it's on its way out with Spark 3. Um, they've never bothered to even port that to Python. Seems like the new thing for graph processing is something new called Spark Graph. Spark Graph was introduced in Spark 3.0. It supports the Cypher query language, which is a specific uh, query language, you know, kind of like SQL, but it's made for graph data structures. And again, when we talk about graphs in this context, we're not talking about, you know, charts and graphs and, you know, line charts going up and to the right and things like that. We're talking about graphs in the computer science information theory sense. For example, think of a social network as being a graph that connects people uh, to other people based on their relationships. You know, that graph of nodes of people and the connections between them is the kind of graph we're talking about here. So Spark Graph is basically the new GraphX, um, and it's based on the Cypher query language, which is a little bit more, well, actually a lot more uh, extensible and, and useful than GraphX ever was. It uses things called the uh, property graph model and graph algorithms. Formerly, Spark Graph was known as Morpheus and also as Cypher for Spark. It's just been absorbed into Spark proper now and renamed to Spark Graph. So if you're into graph processing, that's a big deal with Spark 3. Some other little things, um, ACID support in data lakes is now possible using uh, Spark, using something called Delta Lake. 
I haven't really dug into that much myself yet, but it sounds pretty cool if you're dealing with a, a data lake like an Amazon S3 or something where you just have a bunch of, you know, unstructured CSV data sitting out there. You can actually have ACID, you know, real strong database uh, consistency guarantees around the processing of that data with Spark now if that's what you need. So that's kind of a summary of what's new in Spark 3. Again, the big news is that's a heck of a lot faster. They've deprecated, they're deprecating the old MLlib library that's based on RDDs, deprecating Python 2. And they've got some cool new features like binary file support, uh, GPU instance support, and a Spark Graph for graph processing. Now, I want to make sure you guys are cognizant of the fact that this course is not just about features in Spark 3. These are all new things that are building upon the original Spark, Spark 1 and Spark 2. And a lot of that original technology still works today. It's still supported. So a lot of people enroll in this course and they leave me a nasty review saying, I thought this was about Spark 3 and you're covering stuff from Spark 1 and Spark 2. Yeah, that's still part of Spark. So yes, you can still use RDDs and those are still appropriate things to use for you know simpler processing tasks and they're still useful to understand for wrapping your head around how Spark works under the hood. Uh, they're still supported. You can still use RDDs. You can still use data frames. You can still use data sets from Spark 2. All valid things to do. So these are all different components that have built up in the Spark ecosystem over time on top of each other and we're gonna cover all of them, okay? So don't get upset that we're covering stuff that you know was introduced, you know, a couple of years ago, uh, there's still valid parts of Apache Spark and you still need to know about them and how to use them. We will work our way up to the more uh, quote unquote modern ways of doing things toward the end of the course. So just bear with me. We're kind of like gonna go through a history lesson of Spark here and start with the original uh, Spark 1 APIs that are still supported, RDDs. We'll move on to the Spark 2 APIs like data frames and data sets. And then once we start talking about Spark SQL, we can start to talk about using Spark sessions to query and interact with your data instead. So. We're gonna get there guys to the newer stuff, but uh, before we get to the newer stuff, we have to cover the old stuff first. So let's dive in and get started. <laughs> 